Hi guys, you're very welcome to another video here. As promised, today's video is going to be about triangulation. Um, I've covered a video on this before, but I didn't really go into enough depth and I would like to, to do that today. Before we get started, can I welcome any new subscribers that have joined us recently? Big, big welcome. Thank you for being part of our community. And also I'd like to just say about the buddy system for anyone who doesn't know about it. If you think somebody, you know, by buddying up or being a friend of somebody else's via email or whatever, um, would be of benefit to you to support you or you could support the other person, just leave um, a request and your location in the comments. But also I'd encourage you, there's, there's a lot of requests and there's, you know, sometimes they're not answered, yet people are requesting buddies um, further down in the comments. So maybe just go and have a look at some of the recent or older videos and answer that request, answer someone's request, because, you know, it takes a lot of courage sometimes to actually make that, make a request like that. So anyway, enough of that. I wish you well on it, guys. And uh, let me know how, how it goes if you've um, buddied up with someone. It'd be interesting for all of us to know if it actually has helped. So in the days before, I call it the days before the war. It's like when people used to talk about the, you know, the Second World War and before the war and after the war. And that's the way I view um, your tangle with narcissistic abuse. So before my personal war, I thought a triangle was uh, something you studied in maths, that it was a shape, that it had um, three sides that were equal to each other. Well, now I know that it also stands for one of the narcissistic narcissists hideous manipulation games and guys remember that the narcissists go through life differently to us they see life as a challenge to be met with how much you can crush the other person to get on in other words that everyone is out for themselves and everyone has their mindset they believe that everybody thinks, you know, like they do to a certain extent. And they believe that if they don't get the person before the person gets them, that they're going to lose and they're going to suffer and they're going to be, you know, the, the one losing, missing out. So they, they also believe because they have a high degree of jealousy and envy, because of the way they measure themselves and their success in the world, they measure it outwardly. So their validation comes from ego things like their jobs, their status, uh, their character traits, their power, their control, their financial situation. That's the way they will measure their success, not in what they've actually brought to the world or contributed. So they, they come from a very jealous perspective because they're always weighing up what other people have, like what you have against themselves. And if they see somebody in a similar type of situation to them and that person has more, even if it's as simple as that person is now going on holiday and they, they're not going on holiday and they can't, can't afford to go on holiday, they'll be really, really jealous of that other person. It won't be like, say, you would be and say, isn't that great? They're going on holiday. They deserve it. They've been working very hard. It's it's all about the narcissist. So that's a little bit of background before we get into the triangulation game. And for anybody who is new to this, who doesn't know, this was a big wake up moment for me, a huge wake up moment for me when I heard about this. The narcissist will start a relationship with you and the narcissist will be here and you'll be here. But what the narcissist does in the triangulation game is he brings somebody else into the relationship. 
So he has two people in the triangle. The narcissist is in this corner, you're in this corner, and let's take, for example, the X, if they're triangulating you with the X, which is one of the most delicious, scrumptious, favourite, favourite games of all times. Disgusting, diabolical game, but this is one they love to play, and I think nearly every narcissist plays it. So we've Narky here, we've you here, and we've the X up here. Why on earth's name do they do this? Guys, this is one of the games that has the best payoff for the narc. Alongside all their other manipulations. So, you know, it's not just this manipulation in isolation. They will be doing all the rest, you know, say the isolation game, the push-pull game, the grooming game, the intermittent reinforcement game. All these other games are going on in the background as well. But let's say it's Saturday night and the narcissist wants to celebrate the weekend by getting lots of juicy fuel. And they don't just want it from you. They want fuel from a few different sources, so one of the best games they can possibly play is play two people off against each other. So one in in I'll tell you actually I'll tell you the reasons that they do this in a minute, but just for anyone that doesn't know about this, this is pitting two people against each other by the narcissist going to one and you know saying stuff about this other person over here to this person and then saying stuff to this person over here about this person to, very untrue a lot of it they can they can lie or twist the truth but they're basically they'll either say you said something to this person and then they'll tell you that person said something about you or they'll overpraise this person or criticize this person or you over here will be criticized or praised to the other person. So what they're doing is they're in the middle and they're holding the puppet strings on both people. But unbeknownst to you, the narcissist could be being really nice to you and putting the other person down. And then to the other person, they could be being really nice to the other person and putting you down. There's a variety of ways they play this game. It depends on what particular needs they have at the moment, who is, um, who's on the up or who's on the down, or if they want to just kind of mess around with both of you, they'll do, like I said there a few minutes ago, by being totally untrue to each person, by saying bad things about you and bad things about this person um, to each of you. Why do they do it? Why do they do it? Why does a narcissist do anything? They cause chaos, confusion, destruction, trouble, and they get big, big reactions from two people at the same time by using two people, pushing them the friction of the two people against each other. And this all supplies the narc down in his corner or her corner by the heightened reactions of both of the people that they're triangulating themselves with. So guys, they will get a, a huge amount of fuel from it. They will feel very important. They'll feel significant because they're two people. Now, notwithstanding that this is all, you know, this has all been falsely, um, falsely simulated by them. They don't they don't see the, you know, the fact that they're actually playing a game and cheating. And that's why they're getting all this emotional reaction from people as being not really the people's true feelings, but just a simulated reaction because of what the narcissist has done. Doesn't matter. They're getting this fuel from both people and they forget about that part that they've caused it. And they just see it as these people, these two people really want me. They they have such strong, you know, reactions to each other. They're fighting over me. I mean, I must be so important. Um, and it, it, it feeds that sense that they are actually of any significance. 
So they're trying to make themselves feel significant and they're trying to make themselves feel of some value. But it's all because of an evil, crappy manipulation on their part. So if they were really to look at any value in it, it has no value at all because it's all fake and false and heightened emotions on each person's side that doesn't actually know the truth of the situation. It's just an evil mishmash of of lying, of lying to people to get them going on the narc's behalf. So it serves the purpose of making the narcissist feel important. It gives the narcissist fuel. The narcissist's boredom levels are dissipated for a while because they're enjoying it. They're actually enjoying it. They're enjoying it. So what does it do to the two people involved? Well, the two people involved are getting very upset, but they're also, even if you've never had a jealous bone in your body, if if you as an empath, you know, we do have narcissistic parts to our personalities. Every human being does. But empathic people, their narcissistic qualities are very low and their empathic qualities are higher. But if, if a narcissist falsely stimulates feelings of jealousy in you, then that jealousy in you, that trait can rise Whereas it may never have occurred before in the whole of your life and it may never occur again, stimulated falsely, it can rise and you can become jealous. And if you are jealous and feel that if your jealousy is risen, you can begin to feel that the narcissist is more valuable than they actually are because there's another person that supposedly wants them and it stimulates you to kind of fight for the narcissist. So it falsely rises their value to you in your mind because you're you're afraid of the loss of the narcissist. So it, it's all just stimulated, simulated feelings. But what it achieves for the narcissist is that you're going to try harder to please them and to be the one that they want. It's like, pick me, stay with me, I'm better than that person. And unbeknownst to you, you can get caught up in this sick type of game. It's another way that you can lose a bit of yourself because it's not who you are. But because again, you're put into this arena, it's like a gladiator's arena. You feel you have to fight for your life, but you don't, you instinctively do it. But you need to actually take the time to get out of that arena and look down into it and see what's going on. But if you don't know that people actually do this on purpose, then it's it's a really hard one to get out of. And guys, the thing is, like, just think about you going into a relationship as a, as a normal or empathic person. First of all, we're talking about X triangulation here now. First of all, you, you will have finished the relationship that you were in beforehand and you, you probably won't be thinking about your ex. If you're still thinking about your ex, maybe you share children with them or something so they do come into your life quite a bit, you'll be doing your best to minimise that contact with your ex. And certainly in relation to your new partner, you won't want to be threatening your relationship by continually bringing your old partner into your new relationship. You won't want your new partner's feelings to be in any way, you know, you won't want to make them insecure. You want to make them feel that you two are together now, that you're a unit and that you want to progress forward. So anyone that's got a normal brain, a healthy brain, would so veer away from bringing an ex into the relationship to kind of live in the new relationship with you. And it's a big red flag if anybody does do this in a relationship. Like the narcissist will, the narcissist will trick you into allowing um, an ex or multiple exes into your new relationship by kind of presenting to you, obviously in the love bomb stage, as this gorgeous person. So you're wrong footed because you see actually the reflection of yourself, but you see this gorgeous person because they're giving you everything you want and reflecting back. 
your values to you. So when they tell you a story about, say, a horrible ex, you do tend to believe it and want to help them through it and support them and get to a stage where that person is going to be, you know, appropriately distance distance from your new relationship if they're still giving your partner hassle. Unbeknownst to you, your narcissistic partner is keeping the ex in the relationship and stimulating attention from them in the relationship. So you're both at totally opposite purposes. You're trying to may help the your narcissistic even though you don't realize you're with an arc you're helping that partner to disengage from the last relationship to move forward to heal and to be with you and your narcissistic partner is doing their best to bring the ex along into the relationship and never let the ex go it's it's totally bonkers guys narcissists are bonkers and unfortunately they do a hell of a lot of damage and cause a hell of a lot of emotional pain if you if you haven't got what we call the knowledge when you look back on them and you say bonkers crazy chaotic individuals who play the nastiest of games and cause the most amount of trouble and the most amount of chaos and honestly, the destruction that falls out from even one narcissistic game, like the triangulation game, can be massive. I mean, people can go at each other. It can get out of hand. People that don't know they're being played can maybe, you know, try and destroy the other person. It depends on where you're at in your mind, how badly abused you've been by a narcissist, um, how vulnerable you are, how stable you are at any given time. If you don't know about triangulation and the fact that people actually do this sick, sick stuff, then it's a really dangerous game. Once you know about it, you can kind of draw away from it and say, listen, listen, your new partner, you, you at this stage should not be getting into a relationship with me if you haven't appropriately closed your last relationship and if it's not closed we need to set a kind of time scale or you know a way of you having minimal contact with your ex because I am not signing up for a relationship with you and your ex you know we you didn't sign up for a, a relationship with a narcissist and a relationship with maybe three of their exes. We're not in the narcissistic harem. We don't sign up for that. The narcissist, as far as they're concerned, is, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. I can bring anyone into the relationship that I want. I can mess around with all of you. So that's why it's so important to get away from the narcissist. And not only after that, with the triangulation game, they'll then accuse you of jealousy. And they'll accuse you of in the blame shifting when they discard you this is often a ploy of theirs they'll say you were so jealous of my ex and I've covered this in the video before you were so jealous of my ex you ruined our relationship you did this and you did that and all the while it would be the narcissist pushing the ex in your face you can't get them out of your relationship. You think the narcissist is trying to get them out of your relationship and the narcissist is trying to bring them into your relationship. Oh my God, guys. Get away, get away, get away from these disordered, very nasty individuals who just play with people for their amusement, even if they're unaware that of the reasons they're doing it. It's a thing they do over and over and over again. And they get value out of it until the victim or the target has copped on. And sometimes it takes quite a long time for, for, for you to do that because you keep, you know, another game of the narcissist is hope, future faking, you know, the ex will go soon, we'll get married soon. Um, 
just keep working at it. You know, keep working for me and I'll sort the X out. And it's really a dreadful situation. And another thing that they'll do to your face is when you're being, you know, when they're devaluing you, they will turn, flip the coin on the horrible ex, the ex that was so mean to them. And, you know, the ex was the ruination of their life and brought them to the situation that brought them to their knees. They will then flip it on you and they will start to tell you good things about the ex and you're you will be left totally baffled because because the ex was the spawn of the devil and then suddenly they're looking like the angel of all angels and you're kind of going where did this come from this person that you wanted dead is suddenly suddenly you're suddenly complimenting them and you're going i'm dealing with someone who is insane insane certainly not someone you can have a healthy relationship with guys listen it's the time has gone on again so i better go um i will see you again soon i hope this triangulation vid was of value to you and take care of yourselves and i'll see you again soon bye